Surprise! Zoo Adventures coming to you live at 10 o'clock today. So this week, those of you that watch this regularly, we're here twice. And the entire week is dedicated to Earth Day, Earth Week. We want to be with you on Monday and Wednesday. And we've got some really neat things to share with you today. It's got some fun things. We're at the Butterfly Garden now. Come here. Oh. It's not open yet. It opens in May. Okay. But we have an amazing guest with us. So your Zoo Adventures team today, Steve's in front of the camera. Leslie's behind. Good morning, everybody. Always nice to have Leslie with us. She's, got, she's pulling double duty today. She'll be talking and taping today. And we have a very special guest. Hort Tech, I sent an email today, I think I said Becky. That's not right though, right? It's not Becky, <laughs> no, right? you're wrong. I'm wrong? See? <laughs> I know, I was like, who's Becky? <laughs> <laughs> Come on in, Katie. You guys have met Katie before. So here's, here's Katie, do me a favor, say hi to Katie. Hey. Our live guest, these are live guests, Katie, it's so exciting. Hi everyone in Facebook land. Very cool, so it's awesome to have them here. And as we mentioned, this is all about Earth Day, which is Thursday. 22nd and Earth Week, which we kind of make up because we're going to do this the entire week. That's right, we're celebrating virtually all week. It's awesome to do so. And we thought, you know what, a great place to start is at the Butterfly Garden. Mm -hmm. Remember, not open yet, opens in May. Probably May 1st, but I'm not 100% sure on that. <laughs> Something like that. But you guys have been planning the Butterfly Garden for a week or two? We've been planting for the past <laughs> week, but we've been planning and growing plants for it since the exhibit closed last October. Seriously? You've been planning That's right. since last October? That's right. In an effort to be more sustainable, we've probably grown about 90, 95% of all the plants used in the exhibit this year. 90, 95 plants? 95, 95% of the plants you guys grew? That's right. We propagated them in-house. From seed? From seed, from cuttings from division, any way you could propagate it, we did it. <laughs> I love that. Hey, digital guys, how about a heads up for that one? How about that big hands up or shake or something, thumbs up? That's really cool. It's all done in house. That's right. And you said literally since it essentially it closed, you started getting ready for this year at that time. That's right. When we broke down awesome. the plants and brought them down to the nursery, we started making new ones. I love it. And are these some of the plants that are behind you, Katie? That's right. Yeah, we have an assortment of pollinator and nectar plants outside of the exhibit, and then naturally we have to have some inside for the butterflies to eat. And so use. why is it important to have some on the outside of the butterfly habitat? Well, here at the zoo, you know, monarchs and pollinator gardens in general are just very important here, and we mm. have five pollinator way stations here in the zoo. So we just wanted to add some enhancement five. to the exhibit and, you know, provide some stuff for the butterflies on the outside as well. So the, so, the, so the native butterflies, the ones that we have here in North Carolina and all the other pollinators will come and use this? That's right. Do they use, do, are any of these um, like the caterpillar plants? No, those are not the host plants. So not the host, I couldn't remember the word. In the exhibit, we have, uh, our butterflies in there are tropical ones. They're not from here in North Carolina. Okay. So, you know, just like how humans need their grains and their protein and their fruits and veggies, butterflies need those things too. Makes sense. So on the inside, we have nectar plants. And then on the outside and throughout the park, we have host plants that they not only oh, eat, but okay. then they lay their eggs and larvae on. Gotcha, I see now. So kind of throughout the park, but not here. Not on the inside, just not because inside. those aren't native butterflies. I get it. <laughs> do I get it? Leslie, do I get it? I'm gonna go with no. But Katie's well, smart. You'll get there. But Katie's smart. <laughs> yeah. She knows what she's talking about. Um, can you share, because so these are all pollinator plants. That's right. Can you share some of these with our guests that might be interested in kind of learning about some of these plants? Oh, yeah. Well, and some of these plants you can grow in your home garden as well. Let's focus on those. Well, we have salvia. This is a great plant. I have that in my house, to be Very honest Very tough. Um, we have lantanas. That one's a little bit done blooming, but there's a prettier one. <laughs> um, we have so butterfly neat. bush. We got oh, you do? Pepas. I love butterfly bush. We got... Oh, a little bit of everything. You got so fast ahead of me. It's like you're a fast walker. We got Indian blanket flower. This is a great native pollinator plant. What is it called? Indian blanket flower. It's beautiful. That is gorgeous. Yeah. It's like hummingbirds like it too. Oh, do they? Yeah. 
Neat. We got tree pantas. We got a little bit of everything. I see daisies. Oh yeah, we got African daisies. We got a couple different types of daisies. Daisies, is my, my wife's favorite plant. Can you show the lake? Can you show the da the daisies, Leslie? We got some Thank you very here, much. <laughs> and there's a really pretty yellow purple one. I and you like said that's that an one African one. That's an African daisy. Yes. Neat. Okay. Got pineapple sage. Yeah, we really just Ooh, tried to provide neat. a lot of variety. What's yeah. this pretty one? That's another lantana. That's a, what are you calling? Leslie calling out Lantana. Lantana. Nice job. <laughs> 10 points for you today. Is it? Very okay, neat. here's, so I actually helped take charge of a butterfly garden, my last job. And whenever I got that Lantana, they said it was like the ham and eggs variety because it looks kind of like. Yes. Are yeah. you kidding me? <laughs> ham? And actually probably is ham and eggs. And eggs. <laughs> ham and eggs. Ham and eggs. That's pretty cool. That's that one so thing I remember because it was so funny. I love it. So this is really important though, right? We need to, so we know that pollination is really important. Can you, can we explain to our digital guests kind of what pollination is? Well, pollination happens from a pollinator, which okay. is an insect. Often when we talk about pollinators, we give the butterflies and the bees all the credit, which they are very important. Do not get me wrong. But a pollinator, it can be an ant, it could be a fruit fly, it could be a moth, it really? could be a skipper. Yeah, any insect that lands on a flower and is transferring that pollen to another flower that then fertilizes it and makes a seed, that's a pollinator. And that's how we grow fruit. You know, that's how we grow vegetables. You get the vegetable from the flower being pollinated. So pollination is the act of pollinating other flowers. So. So through pollination, you're making more of that plant. Yes, you're it's making the, it's a the breeding of the plant. Yes. Neat. So we want to eat without pollinators. Mm, I like to eat. That's a good <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, we want to have trees and flowers without our pollinators. And they are pretty to look at too. They are. I guess we got to give that a little bit of credit on that one. <laughs> so that's really neat. And I know that there's also a, a mammal that does a lot of pollinating. Bats. That's correct. Bats do a lot of pollinating. So those of you that are a little bit older and you like your adult drinks, tequila. Thank the bats. Thank the bats. Yeah, bats pollinate the plant that gives us tequila. Which is mezcal agave, which we actually have those plants growing in our desert building. So you can see them here in the park, but no tequila here. Is that, oh, <laughs> just, okay, no tequila here. <laughs> Let's make sure we say that a couple times out loud. Just the plants that can Just use. the mezcal agave. So, because you mentioned that, and you, we're here a little bit. So what is Hort Tech Katie's job? Oh, I do a lot of things, uh, but <laughs> growing and propagating plants, not just pollinator plants, but native plants, annuals, things for color, things to go inside our exhibits with our animals. Okay, that was my So you do yes. work inside the buildings too. That's right. I work inside the desert building that. and the streamside building. Okay, cool. So mm -hmm. you're able to kind of get that whole experience That's going right. on. So you're able to help with that. Mm -hmm. I love that. Very cool. Awesome. So some more really cool plants. We're going to go down, down the road here. Leslie, yeah. come on down here. Oh. Got to point you're out the our class. number one plant, the milkweed. That is uh, the sole host plant for our modern roll butterfly. That. We need a drum roll that one. Can you drum roll that if one? If you want monarchs in your garden, you gotta have milkweeds. And is this, this is, a, it's a pollinator plant. Is this also a host plant? It is, it is the host plant for the monarchs. And so it'll bloom a little bit later in the summer. Oh, it blooms later? Yeah. Okay, cool. And I have planted some of that in my garden. Hopefully I'll get yeah. some pollen. So that is really neat. Digital friends, how many of you have pollinators or pollinator plants in a garden at your house? It's kind of curious. Anybody out there in the digital world have a pollinator garden? I have a, I have a swatch of land in front of my house that we let go wild. Oh, that's we great. We don't mow it or anything. It's kind of between us and the road. Mm -hmm. So we just let it go. It's, it's not very wide. It's maybe six or seven feet wide and X feet long. Mm -hmm. And we just let it go wild. Yeah. And so you kind of need to see the things that are kind of coming up from time to time. Oh, yeah. How about you guys? Anything in there? Leslie, do you well, have I, some pollinator plants? I have a question, though. Oh, you have a question? So, I know milkweed is very important, but there's different types of milkweed. And mm. if we were to plant milkweed, we, I've heard that we need to make sure it's like the native species of That's milkweed. That's right. That, okay. Okay. Just making sure. <laughs> and for those at home, if you don't have a pollinator garden, 
guess what? Here at the zoo on Earth Day, we're actually going to be distributing pollinator garden seed packets so you can start what? your own at home. Really? Yeah. So on Earth Day? On Earth Day, on Thursday, we will be giving out seed packets full of pollinator plants so you can grow some of these plants at your own home and attract pollinators. That is amazing. We need to say that one more time. That's pretty cool. So we're going to be giving out seed packs of pollinator plants on Earth Day for guests coming to the zoo. That's right. Come on now. What? There's got to be, that's a crazy good reason to come to the zoo on Earth Day. Another way to celebrate Earth Day is to come here and get that pollinator pack of seed pack of seeds. What a great thing to do. So Jasmine says, Hi Jasmine. we plant, my two year old loves planting right now. <laughs> Gotta love getting dirty. Um, your hands aren't very dirty by the way. You Bill, say you work yet. in the plants. We have some butterfly plants in our Bill, garden. you Yay! better. Very cool. Know, yeah. Very nice. <laughs> well, good job folks. Yes. Yay, pollinator people. Yay. Is that a thing? Hooray, poop. I mean, pollinators. <laughs> awesome, let's go. Can we go inside yeah, and see what's going go on? Yeah, let's go on in. Check this out. This is so much fun. Going inside. Inside. She has pollinator stuff in her hair. <laughs> Notice that pink and purple? It's kind of cool. Come on in. Well, I'll Thank go you. in. I'll go in. Now, I should tell you, we're going inside the butterfly garden. Remember that it is not open yet to everybody. It will open around May 1. The reason for kind of the delay, let the plants get sol solid in here and make sure we have enough butterflies for a cool experience for you when you come. So we're kind of playing both of those as we go forward. The planning and preparation is all in place, but now the animals and the plants have to do their own thing. So that's one of the reasons. Something else, we are going inside here. We have our hot spot with us. Sometimes it gets a little bit wonky inside the butterfly garden. We're really not sure why. It might be the mesh. We're not 100%. Usually you can still hear us. So if the, if the visual kind of conks out a couple of times, hang in there with us um, because usually it's going to catch and come and go. So just want to let you guys know that before we go any deeper. Ready to go inside? Yeah. Awesome. Let's do it. Let you go first. There goes Leslie. Inside Ooh. the butterfly garden. So far, I think we only have one butterfly hatch, but that's why we go through this little curtain here just to make sure we oh. don't get any runaways that sneak out. We are going to be so lucky. We're going to be able to come up here in a few weeks yeah. and do a taped version of Zoo Adventures for our digital guests with the butterflies all about. We're going to meet yes, with so either Adrian or Katie or somebody, uh, maybe Keely, somebody up here is going to give us a little yeah. tour. So now we're inside the butterfly garden, inside the mm -hmm. habitat itself. So eventually it's be full of butterflies. And you're telling us, you told our guests, our digital friends, that, that your team, you and your team, started all these plants last year? A good chunk of them, yeah. We grew about, I'd say, 90 to 95% of them. Wow. We did add a few things just for a little seasonal color. Okay. But yeah, most of these plants are great nectar sources for our butterflies. Nectar sources. And nectar is like the food for the yeah. butterflies? Mm -hmm. They need sugar, too. Okay. Not nice. too much. Like... <laughs> But yeah, and also it's really important too, you see we have things of various heights because the butterflies need places to rest. They get tired from flying around so much. Oh really? So we try to give them a little bit of different, you know, textures and heights so they can, you know, be comfortable. I wouldn't have thought about that. In butterflies the mornings they rest. tend to hang out more up high because it's sunnier and warmer. Oh, of course. And then, you know, as it warms up throughout the day, they tend to move around a lot more. Right, right, right. Very yeah. Nice. I wouldn't have thought about that. Resting butterflies. That's right. Very cool. Um, Katie, you said you had a joke for us. Oh, okay. <laughs> wait a minute. Let me look at the time. 10, 15. It's time for a joke. Is it? Yes. All okay. right. Let's see your... Okay. <laughs> you said it was really funny. And oh, probably one of the best jokes ever. I don't know about that. That's what you told us. <laughs> All right, Katie, what you got? Why was the butterfly too afraid to go to the dance? Why was the butterfly too afraid to go to the dance because it was a mothball <laughs> her delivery was perfect come on because it was a moth ball i'll stick to my day job <laughs> i liked it okay that was right up there with one of the funniest jokes i've ever heard katie <laughs>
thank you for sharing that at 10, 15 in the I morning. I laughed for all the people who didn't, so there we go. <laughs> I laughed too. So. I love it. No, that's great. I love it. And we got to love fun, silly jokes, right? Um, um, I have a question. Oh, got a question. So how do you take care of the plants? How do you keep these plants alive and happy, I guess? Well, when we're growing them in the nursery, we give okay. them lots of nutrients and fertilizer and, you know, make sure that they're not getting pests or, you know, any sort of disease or, you know, bad bugs that we don't want. And then when we come up here to the exhibit, we they're actually pretty low maintenance. You know, oh, we really? just water them and we prune them. So you do water and prune them? Yeah. So, you know, if something is done blooming or, you know, it, it's, you know, kind of pittering out, we just come up here and... Uh, do a little deadheading to give lots of blooms for the animals or for the butterflies. What was the phrase you just used? Pruning and deadheading. Deadheading? Yes, so. Deadheading? Some perennials, if you take a flower once it's spent and cut it off and deadhead it, it'll continue to bloom longer. Really? And that's really what we're trying to achieve up here is having seasonal blooms for the butterflies so they can get that nectar. So join the Zoo Adventure team for more awesome plant facts and pruning tips. <laughs> Seriously, you cut, you take the, you take the dead head, so you're removing the mm -hmm. dead flower. And essentially tricking it from trying to make seed, and so it just keeps making more flowers. Oh! So we're kind of tricking Mother Nature there. Don't do it very often. <laughs> I've heard she's kind of nasty sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so can you introduce some of these plants? I know we have a lantana over there because oh, Leslie yeah. told us about lantanas. Well, we got lavender. That's one Ooh. a lot of people Ooh. know because, you know, it is lavender. an herb and, you nice. know, you can use it for fragrance and oil. We got hibiscus, which this Oh, the one real is... pretty flower? Hibiscus yeah, here's one. one. Wait. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have several colors of them. Those are a really popular one. That is pretty. Holy cow. And we got blue days, we got more daisies, we've got Mexican sage. Mexican sage? Mm -hmm. We've got clematis, which is a lovely vine. And those of you keen-eyed observers might have been able to peek through and see there's still construction going on, so we're not quite ready to open. <laughs> yeah, getting everything ready for the season. Lots of snapdragons, more pintos. I love, which one's a snapdragon? I don't see a snapdragon. It hasn't bloomed oh, okay. quite yet, but hopefully here in a couple weeks when we open, they should be blooming. Those are pretty flowers. Mm -hmm. I remember growing up, my grandmother had snapdragons all over the place. Oh yes, it was they're kind of really fun. fun. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And you can see, I'm actually still in the middle of doing planting up here, so I'm still getting some last few things settled and So what would, just, just because it's here, what would you do with this? So you have these pots, do the, I, do you take the plants out of these That's pots? Right. or yeah, we do. So whenever you're planting a plant, you always want to break up the roots a little bit and, uh, you know, help them. Is that kind of getting the roots a little looser? So yeah, they little so more? they can settle into the soil and absorb all that water nice and good. And we have media up here, which is just a fancy word for soil. Media is media. soil. Yeah. Interesting, okay. Not dirt. Media. So digital plant, this was not part of the plan. <laughs> Some of you have asked before, no, we don't really script a whole lot of these out too much, to be honest with you. Yeah, you it's kind of like, what are we doing? Out. Let's do it now. And so I'll stick a few others in and I'll just water it in and check on it every day. Really? Yeah. And that's something I assume that, that we could do. Oh we, yeah, you can make plant these planters plant. at your home easy. So we could make a pollinator garden. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of these plants you can get at a local garden center or a nursery or a farmer's market yeah. or get seed and grow them yourselves. And we're going to be giving this seed away again on Thursday on Earth Day. That's right. Zoo. Now, wow. some of these plants in this exhibit are tropicals, so they're not winter hardy, which means here in North Carolina, the cold will hurt them. They won't come back oh, okay, the next sure. year. So that's why some of these, you know, more tropical plants we keep in the greenhouse over the winter. Nice. Listening. We have some questions. Let's see, raise your hand. Cool. So, um, Rudy wants to know, I guess, since you work in the desert area, um, how many, how often do you have to give a cactus that's outside water usually? <laughs> hey, Rudy. Not too often. Um, usually, the normal rainfall here in North Carolina keeps them watered. Um, during the dry season, which is generally kind of like October to March, <laughs> we maybe water our cacti once a month, if that. Wow. But the ones outside, we use what's called a soil probe to check on the moisture. Um, but normally, normal rainfall handles that well. Nice. 
Very cool. Yeah, Thank you, Rudy. And Susan asked, where are all the butterflies? Oh, well, great question, Susan. They aren't right hatched there. yet. <laughs> They're right here, Susan. Oh, look at you cheating. You can see we are protecting them to keep them warm because we still got a couple cold nights this week. But they haven't all hatched yet. So as they hatch, they will come out here into the exhibit. We had one hatch yesterday. So it's <laughs> out here somewhere. Um, but we have over 400 pupae getting ready to come out. So by May 1st, when we're supposed to be opening, we should be full of butterflies in here. And it is an amazing experience. If you haven't been before, it is an incredible experience in here because it is chock full of butterflies. In this, they're flying around, they're landing on you. We ask you not to touch them, but they can touch you. So they will land on you from time to time, but we ask you not to go pick them up or anything. Um, as you might have, and we'll go over some of this stuff later on. We come mm -hmm. back when the butterfly got, when the butterfly space is full, but it is crazy awesome. And with the work that the Hort team has done, they've put they'll be putting feeders, um, extra feeders in some of the spaces. I know. I assume you're going to do the same thing. That'll actually here. be the zookeepers. The zookeepers will yes. do that. So they'll put extra feeders in, and you'll see the butterflies on some of that rotting fruit and the fresh fruit, and they're just in there getting as much food as they can out of that. Mm -hmm. Do you know? What butterflies use to taste their food? What part of the body? Is it their tongue? Is it their antennae? Their feet? Yeah. I think that's such a neat little fact. Crazy. I fun didn't know fact. that. They can taste with their feet. Okay. And there's lots of more fun facts coming with butterflies when we do that butterfly habitat in here. But this, come back to the plants. Come back to the plants. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. So we, we talked about planting a plant that you kind of demonstrated. That was really nice of you to demonstrate that. Yeah, I got to water it before we leave. So... <laughs> Yes. We will help remind you, yes. We, you do need to water that before you leave. Um, and we've talked about that, you, that, the, that the Hort team actually propagated, made, planted, and created, and bred them out, and snipped them, and did all kinds of crazy stuff. 90 to 95% of the plants that you'll see in That's this That's right. That is so cool. That it was all done here at the North Carolina Zoo. Because we have like 4,602 greenhouses. We've done some <laughs> things on those, too, which has been really fun. To be able to share and we've got some really fun things that we've been we able have to do seven that. greenhouses <laughs> but close. I was close very close i yeah. was close something like that let's show them this one last garden i think this is kind of neat come down here i like this one over here and this just wasn't the horticulture crew either i mean really? our our arbor team has been a big help in this project the cool animal division the maintenance pro uh, our maintenance crew our exterior horticulture crew because you know i can't lift those big metal planters on my own no the teamwork <laughs> yes i don't think anyone can <laughs> that's awesome to hear that uh, i do like this garden um because this is then when this one is full it is amazing there's butterflies everywhere yeah can you introduce us i recognize some of the plants but can you introduce us to a couple of the other plants in here oh yeah we got blue days such a sweet little dainty bloom We've got Croton, we've got... Is that like a Proton or Electron? <laughs> oh, I'm that's, not that's sure chemistry. where the Kate name comes from. You were thinking her jokes were bad. <laughs> we've got Celosia. <laughs> this is a really Celosia? great annual here in North Carolina. Very easy to grow from seed. Almost anyone can grow this one at home. We've got Celosia. Pentas and Shrimp Plant and Verbena. Verbena is That's a, verbena? Yeah, and this is also a native plant. So this is That's one that will cute. overwinter here in North Carolina. That's really cute. More lantana. Oh. So, so much happens in here, which is yes. really neat. And I love that you, that you shouted out to the team because it's really mm -hmm. cool that it's amazing teamwork mm -hmm. that puts this habitat together for you when you become an in-person guest as opposed to a digital guest. And we can't wait for you to be here when you get that chance. Anything else we should talk to them about? We've mentioned that they can make their own pollinator garden. We've mentioned that they can do, they can come visit in May. The, the garden mm -hmm. will be up and running. There'll be butterflies all over the place. The teamwork. You told us an amazing mothball joke. <laughs> if you didn't hear it, you need to tune in again. You need to go back. The guests love it. The digital guests love it. So thank you. They gave you all <laughs> sorts of laughing emojis and said that they loved it. That is awesome. So, so yeah, fantastic. So we're so happy to be here today with this kind of surprise live but with earth week earth day happening on thursday we'll be with you today um leslie and i'll be back with you on wednesday and we'll have a lot of friends answering questions on that day 
We're going to take you on an iNaturalist hike, so you have to tune in for that. Mm -hmm. A little tiny bit of advice. Turn your volume down a little bit. <laughs> if you tune in on Wednesday, and we hope you do, turn your volume down a little bit to start because... Uh, we were very loud. We were loud to start. Steve loud? No, yeah. I never. It's a little <laughs> shocking, I know. But yeah, so Steve was a little bit loud to start. So turn your volume down a little bit on Wednesday until you get your ears used mm -hmm. to where we're talking about. But it's a neat thing. We've mm -hmm. talked about iNaturalist and what a neat app that is and an app you may want to take advantage of down the road. And that is also a great app for plant identification too. Oh, it is? Yeah. So maybe if you're curious if you have any pollinator plants or host plants in your yard, Leslie can teach you how to use iNaturalist <laughs> to identify them. Me. How come Steve can't teach? Oh, that's because he doesn't know anything about iNaturalist. Yeah. And he had to learn. Not on, yet. He had to learn during the taping. It's my time to shine. <laughs> it was your time to shine. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Well, digital guests, thank you so much for tuning in today. Today's live zoo adventures. The team today was Steve in front of the camera. Katie and Hort in front of the camera. Leslie behind the camera. Thanks for joining us. Always so good to see you. The zoo is open. All of the buildings are open now. Yes. All the buildings are open. The restaurants are opening now or soon, which is really neat as well. And we still have a little bit of restriction on attendance, so make sure to make those reservations online to get mm -hmm. your spot to come to the zoo. Still have a mask requirement in place. The mask is in place, again, to protect you, to protect us, and to protect all the animals that you're coming to see. Thanks again. Stay safe. We'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye, y'all.